Speaking of empty promises, President Biden is going to give Poland nuclear energy. Watch. We're also launching a new strategic partnership with plans to build nuclear power plants and bolster Poland's energy security for generations to come. Wait a minute. He's helping Poland become energy independent? What about the U.S.? Here to break it down is Power the Future Executive Director, Daniel Turner. Hey, girl. Uh, Daniel, Good to be with you, Jimmy. Of course. Uh, who do you trust more with energy policy, the Bidens or the Amish? <laughs> it's it's amazing to see the Biden administration just bend over backwards for every other country's energy needs, right? Where we have secret negotiations happening with Iran. The Biden administration made uh, oil deals with Venezuela. Now we're giving nuclear power to to Poland, and 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 yet at the same time, and those are all wonderful, reliable sources of energy. And yet here domestically, he's making us buy these crappy, inefficient, expensive uh, um, uh, wind and solar that are made in communist Chinese labor camps. So I don't know why he has such preferential treatment for these other countries around the world. And here domestically, he's plunging us into energy poverty. Well, that's the question I was going to ask you. Is there any way to be as devout a globalist as a lot of the unit party happens to be in Washington, D.C., and not have it come at the expense of your party's, uh, your country's well-being. Yeah, that's a great point, and and that's uh, an ongoing problem with establishment D.C. And it truly is bipartisan. It's mm -hmm. almost like like diplomatic paternalism, right? It's this belief that the rest of the world are all infant infantile countries, and it's America's responsibility to take care of them uh, forever. Right, we we still have to guard Japan for some reason. I don't know. It's been a long time, but no, we're in charge of protecting Japan. So now we're in charge of giving the Poles nuclear power. And don't get me wrong, I love the Polish nation and 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 the Polish people. But why are we responsible for your energy independence? How about Europe? Europe's a big boy continent, right? These are big boy and girl countries. It's time they step up to the plate, but then counter that with what's happening domestically, mm -hmm. where our utility prices are through the roof, our oil and gas prices are through the roof, and consequently, all inflation is through the roof. And, and yet, what is the Biden solution here? It, it's, it's doubling down on unreliable, untested, blatantly failed, wind and solar that's made in Chinese slave camps. So it's, you scratch your head and wonder what the heck is going on. It's really weird. Do you remember there was a Broadway play called The Producers where they're trying sure. to tank the play to collect insurance money? I feel like we elected Max Bialystok and they're trying to tank the, like we should have Nathan Lane play Biden in the second term. Because I mean, honestly, yeah. as someone who follows energy markets, if you were intentionally trying to weaken the United States of America, could you do a better job than the producers are in the White House right now? Well, I, I got distracted because I'm already rewriting the lyrics for Springtime for Hunter and, and all of the great opportunities that you <laughs> will have. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if you're going to have a play, it's nothing without drugs in the green room. So I think Springtime for Absolutely. Hunter is the way to go. <laughs> it's really frustrating. And as an energy guy, I mean, I, I need to know this on a personal level. How many times have you almost shot your TV watching Biden in the last two years? It's it's beyond frustrating because you see the suffering in the American people. You see them uh, uh, struggle to pay for grocery bills. Eggs are eight dollars a dozen, and and for Biden at the State of the Union, by the way, which never mentioned energy security for no. America. Mm -hmm. He's mentioning it in NATO, but he's not mentioning it here. But for Biden to talk about this rosy economy, it shows that neither he nor the vice president, none of them go grocery shopping, none of them fill up their cars, none of them pay their heating bill, because the rest of us know this is not a great economy. And and it's all undergirded by the fact that we have this war on American fossil fuels. But really quickly, just to you know, give Biden credit for one thing, there was a really powerful moment at the end of that State of the Union when he said we needed to choose between unity and schmegadahemenaha. <laughs> and, and I think he drew a line that the American people really respected because, you know, there's been, you know, as, as great as schmegadahemenaha can be, I don't think the long term yield is up there with unity. No, I think he drew a red line just like previous Democrat presidents have done, and you got to fear those red lines. Oh, Obama taking a lot of heat on this show. I love it. Thank you, Daniel. Always a pleasure, Jimmy. My man.